Welcome to another edition of Take 5. Of course, we're in Exodus. We're going through the 10 plagues, and we just finished the plague of frogs, and we're about to get another one. So let's go to chapter 8, verse 12. After Moses and Aaron left Pharaoh, Moses cried out to the Lord about the frogs he had brought on Pharaoh, and the Lord did what Moses asked. The frogs died in the houses in the courtyards and in the fields. They were piled into heaps and the land reeked of them. But when Pharaoh saw that there was relief, he hardened his heart and would not listen to Moses and Aaron, just as the Lord had said. You know, uh, you're too young to remember, but uh, in 2001, our nation was attacked from outside for the first time since Pearl Harbor and uh, the Twin Towers went down and the Pentagon was attacked and right after that church attendance was record high I remember the news was reporting traffic jams in Atlanta because of people going to church on Sunday and then we got, we didn't have any more attacks for a little while, and it all went back to the way it was. When we're faced with calamity, we turn to God and we listen to Him. But once the calamity leaves, then we leave God. Let that not be the case with you and me. Let let us stay close to God, whether times are good, times are bad blessing, uh, discipline, whatever God is doing to us or putting us through, let us remain faithful and true to him. Let's don't waver. But Pharaoh, when, when the plagues came, he said, sure, you can go. And then when they left, he said, no, you can't. So we got to give him another one. Verse 16, then the Lord said to Moses, tell Aaron, stretch out your staff and strike the dust of the ground. And throughout the land of Egypt, the dust will become gnats. They did this. And when Aaron stretched out his hand with the staff and struck the dust of the ground, gnats came on people and animals. All the dust throughout the land of Egypt became gnats. But when the magicians tried to produce gnats by their secret arts, they could not. Since the gnats were on people and animals everywhere, the magicians said to Pharaoh, This is the finger of God. But Pharaoh's heart was hard, and he would not listen, just as the Lord had said. So now it's even his own people, his own magicians are saying, look, this really is God doing this. Now you think about it. It says all the dust of the land became gnats. And you know Egypt is in the desert, so there's a lot of dust, which means that's a lot of gnats. So people literally were covered with gnats. Now, here's the interesting thing about the plague so far. You had blood, you had frogs, you got gnats. Now, neither one of these by themselves is a catastrophe, but it's a nuisance. But when you put it all together, and when you've got gnats everywhere, that's bad. You know, you know you have how one gnat will just kind of fly around you and... You know, kind of just bug you. You just can't, you can't concentrate because of that one gnat. You know, maybe it flies up your nose or gets in your eye or something. Just imagine if they're everywhere. You can't walk anywhere without, without them being there. Can't do anything. Try washing your clothes and they're all on your clothes. You know, so. Anyway, Pharaoh's not listening though. Uh, so, we got to give him another one. Verse 20, then the Lord said to Moses, Get up early in the morning and confront Pharaoh as he goes to the river and say to him, This is what the Lord says. Let my people go so that they may worship me. If you do not let my people go, I will send swarms of flies on you and your officials, on your people and into your houses. The houses of the Egyptians will be full of flies. Even the ground will be covered with them. But on that day, I will deal differently with the land of Goshen where my people live. All right. Now you see God's making a separation between the Egyptians and his people. And God always makes a separation between the world and his people. Now, his people do suffer harm. There's no doubt about that. His people suffer through floods and earthquakes and things like that. 
But God protects his people in a special way. And we see that here. And God does protect his people certainly for the more important uh, situation and that being eternal life. And no, nothing can ever take that away from us. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. I can show you lots of scriptures on that. But anyway, let's look at the flies here. Verse 22, no swarms of flies will be there, talking about Goshen, so that you will know that I, the Lord, am in this land. I will make a distinction between my people and your people. This sign will occur tomorrow. And the Lord did this. Dense swarms of flies poured into Pharaoh's palace and into the house of his officials throughout Egypt. The land was ruined by the flies. Then Pharaoh summoned Moses and Aaron and said, go sacrifice to your God here in the land. But Moses said that would not be right. The sacrifices we offer the Lord or God, our God would be detestable to the Egyptians. And if we offer sacrifices that are detestable in their eyes, will they not stone us? We must take a three-day journey into the wilderness to offer sacrifices to the Lord our God as he commands us. All right, we're going to stop right there for today. Uh, but I just want to make a point again. You need to be on God's side. Notice the folks on God's side didn't suffer these plagues. So you need to make sure you stay on God's side. Now, of course, Moses is going to keep asking to take that trip. Pharaoh's going to keep saying no until the 10th plague. But we still got a few to go. All right. We'll see you tomorrow on the next edition of Take 5. Now I've got to find my stop button. Hold on a second. Oh, I went way long today. Okay. Love you. See you tomorrow.